podcast. My name is Grant. And I'm Meg. And today we are going to talk about, uh, we talked with Andrew last time about OS 5, and we're going to uh, look at, hey, what is it going to take to upgrade our app to use OS 5? Mm -hmm. And actually, since since we've talked, we've gone through 500, 501, and now we're on to 502, which actually has some really interesting stuff in it. We're just going to go through the basics and then just touch on that kind of right at the end, some of the new, really mm -hmm. interesting stuff. Uh, and that stuff was hinted at. Yeah, I think maybe we hit that last time. So anyway, we're going to look at that just a little bit, but then we'll probably get together in the next episode or one of the episodes uh, and talk with Andrew about some of the new stuff because there's some really important stuff that is going to make your life much, much easier uh, when it comes to writing some more complicated apps. Uh, so anyway, uh, Meg, let's go ahead and do this. I Really, there's not that many changes that most people are going to run into. Yeah, um, I think especially for this app, we it might be a really smooth upgrade. Um, right. If you have a really big app that's been on Coalesce for kind of a long time, you're, you're going to run into a lot more issues. But um, it's I don't really expect too much. Yeah, and, and there's really two ways to think about this upgrade, right? You can think about it as just, uh, and let's let's do that the first time. Like, let's just go in and we'll just upgrade the Coalesce version. Yep. Um, and to find the latest Coalesce version, you're going to go into... Uh, you, you go to the GitHub page and you can just look right at the bottom and it will show you whatever the, the current building one is. So and here's hold it in. You can come down here. And I mean, you can also just go look at the change log. Um, the change log is going to show you wherever that is. It's in the middle and capitals are shouting at you. What? I'm blind. Right here it is. Here it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so here's the latest one. Yep. But you can also see if you really want to know at the bottom, there's the little mm -hmm. little tag things that the little yeah, labels. Yeah, am I still blind? I just keep on going all the way to the bottom. Oh, there you go. oh yeah, there it is. There you go. There you right there, all the little build things. Go. Um, yeah. You can see which ones are building. So there's your 502s. And these are the same. So yep. anyways, let's go back to that change log just so we can kind of reference that. So 5.0.2. So head over to um, your package, JSON, and look for you can update Coalesce View and Coalesce View Beautify. And I'm just going to delete this middle part. And just as a reminder, so we used to be on a lot of these CI builds. Now we're basically getting rid of those where there's just, it's always going to be yeah. the, the right stuff. So it's, it's just going to be full releases, semantic early versioning. If yeah. we do have like a big feature that we want to roll out, we may do a CI build if you want to try that out. But by and large, the most recent stuff will always be a real build. Uh, with kind of your, your typical semantic. Yeah, and I'd recommend maybe going through and like updating. Okay, so so that's the second part. So so that's the other piece yeah. that I think we have to go look at is how do you know what version to bring your other tools up to, especially on the 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 JavaScript side, on on the website, on, on that front end in, in the views in the view code. So what should these be? And so uh, we've gone through and tried to pick the best versions of all of these things, and it, even even so, we're still even a little bit lagging. I've noticed that when I upgraded to 5 even within, it almost feels like hours, but it's probably days or a week or so that you're going to be behind a little bit. And so what we found is that one of the best ways to do the upgrade is to actually go ahead and generate out a project uh, that allows you to then go in and compare the difference between the two things. Um, so I guess we could just do that real quickly if we wanted to go and, and generate a project. We did. Well, I don't know how important it is to focus it, on. It's not easy. It's, again, yeah, all you have to do. This one's about up to date. This one should maybe be two point something. Yeah, but the, suffice it to say, if you want to do that, just go ahead and generate a project, mm -hmm. and then look at this file and just compare all the versions and bring them up to whatever the template has. Yeah. Uh, whatever your templated out project is. So it's it's really easy to do. This is technically all you should probably have to do. There will be times when you actually have to go in and upgrade a thing because we're using a new feature. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to get an error. And if you get an error when you upgrade, then this is probably the issue. So I guess well, let's, let's go ahead and do an MPMI. Uh, and yeah, and your thing too is I'd recommend if you're, if you're really far behind on a lot of these, I would maybe consider doing them either one at a time or just like a couple at a time because it'll get, you'll start to lose track of right. who's breaking who. Yeah, and especially if you have a bunch of dependencies in other parts of your project, um, this is part of, they talked about DLL hell back in the, the days of, of con components. And, and this is somewhat akin. Uh, you just have to be really careful because if you use a component and you use some other version, I mean, you can we can get that and we can support it, but it can get a little bit dicey uh, when it comes to getting everything uh, up to speed together. So fortunately, Vue and some of its, its components are getting pretty stable. And so we're not seeing a ton of changes. Uh, so anyway, okay, so they're, they're, 
This stuff's up to date. Yep, we and then if, we'll update the back end. Well, let's go. Let's go do a run build and see how we look. Uh, yeah, we can we can do that just on the front end. Hey, just make sure our front end's good. I, I'd be hesitant to do this. Oh, maybe not until because we update. We have to generate on the back side. So well, let's just see what happens. Yeah. So let's let's go update our back end yeah, and let's great. do that dotnet call us. Um, and that should be right here. Oh, we should have started on the back end. It's okay. It doesn't matter. So you just remember, you update that once, one spot, the directory build prompts, and that will propagate through all of your it. different projects. And just remember, if you add a new project and you want to do those things, you have to go in and manually modify the project file, because otherwise it will just use NuGet and will grab whatever the version is. And so you want to make sure you go through and actually check your projects to make sure that you haven't accidentally used NuGet to upgrade them. Now, you can totally use NuGet to upgrade your projects. You just have to do it either at the solution level or in each project to make sure you have the latest stuff. Yeah, I'm too much though, whatever works. Okay, what's this? We're gonna call us five foot monthly package. Um, okay. Why is that still like that? I've just did NPMI. What did I do wrong here? We're gonna call us CLI. All right, am I doing okay, what? Did you just run a build there? Or? Um, I just did a .NET call us, but it thinks that my, oh, it's happy now. Uh, uh, great. It, it, so it does have to restore. Because the, the web project wasn't up to date or something. Oh, no, it's still not happy about that. Okay, hold on. Yeah, the CLI. I need to restore the whole project. Oh, yeah, because it is complaining about CoSView version of the NPM package stats. Where did you save everything? I think everything should be saved. Oh, no, I didn't save. I'm like, why, why is this not working? <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And that's why NPMI ran so quickly. It's like, wow, I'm that like, was really fast. <laughs> yeah. Good catch. Okay, good. I, I didn't see it like spin. It's like, oh, maybe Magnus has a super fast computer and internet connection. I mean, it still ran pretty fast. So, I don't know. Okay, so now we can run CoS on this. Oh, better work. That's now saved. And you shouldn't ever need to like, re, uh, your your migrations, things like that. That's really just a .NET thing, so you don't have to run any of those. Yeah. It's really just on the website. You're going to upgrade those version numbers. You're going to run .NET CoS, upgrade any things that need to be changed. And in this case, there was nothing, because we were relatively close. Well, we we're actually, actually we... Oh, did we hit it up above? Yeah, it was up here. Oh, yeah, we hit a couple changed. files. Because it, it was picking some stuff up, but it was complaining that we were like a weird version. Great. So, so just walk through what we've done so far. We upgraded our, our back end projects in the directory build prompts. We upgraded our front end projects in our package JSON. We uh, ran an MPMI. We ran a .NET CoS. And now we're ready to run a build on the front end to see what issues we have uh, with respect to yep. uh, our, our front end. Yep, so let's do npm run build and see what we get. See here. Now, we also be noticed that you can run npm run dev and it will run, and sometimes you'll have actual files that um, are like there's a warning or something like that. So you always want to run a build before you check in just in case so that way your builds aren't failing on your build server. This is a bad project. We didn't do anything there. We didn't do anything tricky. So, <laughs> so the one thing that, so when I upgraded several other projects last week, I ran into, the only issue that I ran into was when you're actually getting things back from a call. So if you make a call, and I don't know, are we ever, we're never, are we never doing this? We must be doing this somewhere. Let's just go look. They might just not be getting picked up. Um, so source components, we only have a couple files to look at. That's probably not on We are, and, and in general, we try to catch all these things at build time, but every once in a while, I mean, we're still looking at JavaScript at some level. Or were there any things where it would only be where we were calling like a method or something like that? That's really, and we're calling a method and we're trying to get a result back from that method. Yeah. Um, and if we're not we, doing that. We have one method, right? We have that, what's it called? It's on our question. That's where we have a method. So our class data source behaviors. Hey, we don't. Maybe it's we should we I should be showing more stuff. I swear we had one. I did too. I thought we'd have one for sure. If not, we should build one. Yeah. We can show the difference. Um, our question. So we oh we had a service. Oh, that's not anything. Um. Yeah, is that one right there? Get random question. Check what this is doing. So maybe that's going to be something good. Otherwise, we can just build something real quick, kind of show what it is. Let's do our... Oh, there it is. So this might, this just might not work here, but it probably it didn't get picked up by build because it's not there. Right. Well, yeah, it's not. It's so so there is where some Let, typing let's stuff. This and just look at what yeah, it let's see what happens. So this is probably not going to work. Um, yeah, something to be aware of. Uh, okay, so let's build our back end, make sure this is all good. Um, 
can't, don't sure if this will be broken anywhere. I don't think we used, oh, it will be broken here, yeah. I can't remember if we used it or not. Okay, um, which it could not be found. I'm surprised this is, oh, this is our test because we haven't written any tests. Yeah. That's okay, that's from when we deleted that file and then never cleaned up everything. Um, yeah, this is all our tests. Yeah, so we can probably just get rid of those widget tests. Just yeah. Just we don't have the widget there anymore. Although it's not going to affect running the app, so. No, but it'd be nice to just. But it's just... I forgot to clean that up on day one. Here. Um, so we might as well clean that up. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. So now the only thing here is um this allow authorize. Oh, yeah. It's been um depreciated in favor of allow authenticated. Just like that. So um, honestly, the best way to update this is to just do it everywhere. So now the difference there is if someone is authorized, they have they've gone through a specific check to make sure they're authorized. Where authenticated just means they have a user account. Yeah, and it's not, it didn't really change the functionality. It's just like a naming change. Right. It, it, it's just clarity. Exactly, because this is what it was actually doing, and it wasn't clear, and so we just made that word a, a bit more clear. I don't think you need to run OLS for this, but I'll just do it to make sure, because um, I think it is just a naming thing. Good. And yeah, it's just that one that I deprecated. Yeah, okay. So let's try running this, and let's go see what happens with our random question. Great. Yeah, we ended up with a few more little things. This is this is good. It's a nice little setup here. And we can go back and look and see why we didn't end up getting an error and things like that around that particular. Well, I think the result, I think result is still valid, just so we return back. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't return what we think it's gonna return. I think so it's just return. gonna it's yep. gonna break when we go there. Yep. Uh is it in questions? Probably. Is that the one that gives a random question? That is working. All right, hold on. Let's see if we know what we're talking about here. Maybe it's still under there, but there's a quicker link in it. But there should be, are we calling random question? Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, random question, object, answers. Hold on, let's go look at it. Yeah, so effectively the difference here is that that actually returns um, what you what you end up, oh, so this, this call is getting made, I think, Potentially, the difference here is that the way we're doing this, it could be, uh, so this is a computed, and we're just grabbing the result. But is that what's returned? And this is, I think this is actually from the call itself, yeah. is not the entire result. Like It's like a response, and then data, and then object. Yeah, because the call is made here. Right. And then... You just have a computed property to grab what comes back from yeah, it. So the call's made in one spot, and we're actually just using the results somewhere else. Yeah. And so if so we would have had, right. if we would have had something else where it was effectively we we had an await on line seventy two, and then mm -hmm. that assigned that value into something, the value that we assigned into something would have been different. And so in this case, it actually just worked because we just did it a different way. Yeah, because Let's we're using it inside the computer really quick. Um, if you want to. Yeah, let's do it. Great. Yes. Um, our question equals question service dot get human question, uh, and then we want to have to make that async and do an await. Is that it? I do that backwards. It's fun. Is it? No, you're good. This is, oh, that's fine. Um, just put a little button up here. Yeah, we just then aren't using it anymore. This is the great thing about Vue. You can literally just hack little things into your UI to try something. And it makes it super easy. I mean, look at look at how simple that is. Just add a button that calls a little method, and it's now on your UI. And don't forget to remove it. <laughs> yeah. But it, it don't works. commit this. It, it's, it's it's pretty great with with respect to those things. So use good source control hygiene and check all your files before you check them in. Okay, let's pull that back over and take a look and see what we got. Questions and then inspect. There's our click me. Okay, so there's that. And so the difference here is that this is actually returning the question object. Because usually a, you'd have to do that dot object dot result thing. Yep, here. Yeah, so you have to do all that stuff. Now you can still get to that by using question dot, I think it's um, 
or it's not a question, but it's quite a, it's the question service. Oh yeah. And you can you well, can call yeah, it the is, other way. Which is kind of what we're doing up here. Yeah. Right. Right. So so instead of calling result, you can call something else, and it'll give you the. I think it's raw result. Is, is what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look. Raw, raw response. response. Yeah, raw response. And so raw response is going to give you what you used to get by default. Yes, there's um, all that. So anyway, it just makes it a little more straightforward. And what happens is, is you don't have these things just hanging off there because you know that data would be there and so CoS is gonna provide for you every time. Uh, but now you just get the object returned and it's strongly typed and all the things. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's a that's a nice way to be able to make that happen. So yeah, we should probably go in and make a, an instance method sometime. I don't know if we even have an instance method on any of our calls. So we should do that and maybe make a static method as well. Yeah. So anyway, we kind of hinted at the beginning, anything else on the upgrade? I think our upgrade's not complete. No, our upgrade's really Check that in and if you, guys really are, you guys will run into other problems if you've done anything else, like if you've deviated from us. For example, you can like bind to the URL like query string parameters. Um, that syntax has been updated. There's a couple of other things, but all of it's in the change log, so you should be able to yeah. just go and fix those things. And if you have any questions with an upgrade, feel free to ask in the comments. Yeah, so the comments or post a, an issue in GitHub. Uh, we're happy to kind of, if we have issues around there, uh, let us know. And again, the change log is going to be super helpful. It's going to talk about all the things you have to do to upgrade and just go back. If you don't see something, uh, just look at all the changes from the version you're going from to the version you're going to. And in between, you should be able to find everything you need. So uh, we're really careful to make sure that we catch all those things. So we ended a little bit at the beginning about the new thing coming out in 502, which is currently, is, has now released. And uh, we're not going to go into it a lot, but we just wanted to show you a little bit. Meg, you want to pull up that uh, yeah. that screen right there? One of the things that we find that folks want to do a lot with Coalesce is they want to be able to support situations where you don't just have one set of users using your app, right? You actually want to do what we would call multi-tenancy, right? And so what this is, is there's an alpha thing called Tenancy Core, which builds in the basic multi-tenancy models. And then you have some options of um, different kinds of tenancy that you want to create. Like, do you want to create your tenants um, as self-service where people can create their own? Do you want to create where the only the global admin can create services? And what's this kind of talk about a couple of use cases? Like that would be uh, if self-service is just I want to log on and you basically get your own area, a sandbox effectively, right? For your organization or for yourself, and you can make as many as you want. Uh, another one would be a global admin where let's say you're you're actually selling something and you want to have somebody sign up for your service. And they're going to go in and use your service to do those things. Uh, and then there's actually tenant membership creation um, by your OpenID Connect, uh, which is that last option there. Mm -hmm. uh, or, and then there's membership by invitation. So you can invite people into your tenant as well. Yeah. So, and I think for this one, you need to click uh, one of these. Yeah, one of these other ones. ones. I don't know which one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to turn that on. You turn various options on. and. Um, I don't know what the combination is that maybe we should yeah, get, the, get the right combination. Well, we're, we're, what we'll do is we're going to bring Andrew on, who wrote most of the code awesome. behind this, maybe all the code behind this, and uh, and we can then kind of talk through, hey, this is what it takes to to do that. And maybe, get, I guess, core is probably required in all the cases. But anyway, we'll talk through this. We'll give you some in, input or some, some details about how exactly it's implemented. But this is something that is actually pretty difficult to implement correctly. And we think we have a really good pattern here. And we wanted to give... The folks are using CoS a way to build multi-tenancy into their apps in a really pretty simple and straightforward way that's not going to take you a lot of extra time, as well as having to worry about uh, doing a whole bunch of things that are security related. So I think too is this isn't you you could even use this template in on CoLS app. I mean, you wouldn't be able to do a one-to-one, -one, but yeah. the pattern here isn't it's not right. super coalesce specific yeah. in any case. Right. We were actually debating whether to put them in at all yeah. because it's it's not coalesce specific. So you could literally take this, lift it, and put it in one of your own apps. Yeah. Uh, just as far as how you do multi tenancy. You, you, know, you just have to write the coalesce bits yourself. There's a zillion ways to do multi tenancy. And like one of the things that we're actually not supporting right out of the gate is being able to do that with individual accounts. Mm -hmm. Right. Right now it's all open ID connect types of accounts that we're supporting right now uh, because there's a bunch more steps we have to go through in order to support local accounts. So we have to decide, let us know if that's something that you want to try to support. Uh, it's not that much farther, but there's just there's just a ton of details when it comes to yeah. like switching tenants. Yeah, and you switch tenants see visible. that first bit of it too. I mean, you, totally you could figure it out with the individual accounts on with this pattern. Right. It, right. it would be, it's just a little bit more work to do it. Right, you have to just go in and link up all the things. There's several spots like where you're switching tenants, just the validation of who's in which tenant, all yeah. that stuff. So, anyway, 
I think that probably brings us to the end of the upgrade. We're looking forward to showing you some of the stuff in the future about how the tenancy works. We're pretty excited about that because um, it opens up all kinds of possibilities for folks building new kinds of apps. And uh, yeah, just getting a lot of good feedback around the 507 the new features. And uh, it's so far super solid and lots of production level apps already running on uh, the Pango framework. So anyway, uh, Meg, anything else before we no, sign off? No, that's it. Leave any comments that you guys have about upgrading and coalesce. And or any other any other things you want to see demonstrate, we're happy to add it to our trivia app if we can. So yeah. great. Well, until next time, keep on building awesome coalesce apps. Thanks all.